Advertech announced yesterday that it's going to acquire the Maravist Group for 450 million rand. In studio with us to tell us more is Advertech Chief Executive Leslie Marstorp. 12% of your market cap. This is a significant transaction and uh, we're glad you could come and give us a little bit more of an insight into the strategy. So often we had your predecessor sitting in that chair, mm. Frank Thompson, and uh, Gugu was ruthless in saying to him, why, Never. <laughs> <laughs> why have you not taken some uh, heed of what's happening to Kuro and Kuro's growth, etc. This is a big deal though, and maybe a move in that direction. A couple of things, uh, Alec. Firstly, thanks for having me. Um, secondly, the uh, big story, I think, is that Alvitech's uh, student enrollment for 2015 will increase by 70%. So this is not just as a consequence of the Maragon or Maravest deal that we've just announced yesterday. It's also a result of Centurus and the other uh, transactions we've uh, but just but slow down sort of done. 70%. Percent, mm. yeah. Student That's numbers. That's hypergrowth. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Let me also say that, you know, whilst I would like to take all the credit for these uh, acquisitions, uh, these acquisitions have been in the making for a while. Transactions of this nature don't happen overnight, as you know. I mean, in fact, my school's division have had a relationship with Maravis for, for several years. So there are often kind of conditions that sort of enable a transaction to happen, and it just so happened that it sort of coalesced around this time. So as much as I'd like to take all the credit, it's certainly not uh, uh, for me. The second point I think about this deal that's important, Alec, is that it consists of both premium schools, which is the area where we are the market leader in South Africa. As you know, we own the Crawford schools, Trinity, Abbott's College, uh, etc. In addition to the uh, sort of premium schools which fit into that mold, Maravest or Maragon Group also own a couple of low fee and low fee uh, uh, schools. That's the area where we signaled that's a new market for us uh, to enter where there's uh, significant uh, growth. So this will mark our modest entry in that space. So we're going to explore in the real laboratory, actually having to run these institutions, how, uh, wha how best to, to make that model work. The third aspect of this deal that is very exciting for me is the fact that management is coming, having bought into the Advitech vision, taking stock in the company. We've signaled in our announcement that the bulk of the purchase consideration will actually be in shares, meaning that they want to be incentivized as part of, of Advitech uh, going forward. And then finally, the, uh, what's exciting about the deal is there's an embryonic sort of uh, digital um, sort of te technology company within Maragon that I think is also very exciting. So they they kind of create uh, and distribute uh, uh, curriculum content to uh, students and hopefully we'll be able to do that outside of our school uh, constituency as well. Because the future, as you know, I mean, we spoke about Microsoft before I entered uh, the studio. The future is uh, technology, and technology is changing the way education delivery models uh, will unfold. I want to go back to your increasing your exposure into the low fee schools. Doesn't this mean that you have to uh, really fight to get a good deal? Because yourself and Kira are looking to move into that market a lot more aggressively. A couple of uh, things. Firstly, uh, I think there's going to be a number of players that will enter the uh, space. Right? There's a massive demand. There's clear evidence. There's a massive demand for quality education uh, out there. Um, Caro is out there, and I think there'll be there'll be several others. There's a new company that uh, will be launching a few schools uh, next uh, uh, year called Papini Academy. Spark schools are growing, mm -hmm. and then there are several others who have, have come onto our radar. So whilst the, the competitive landscape is certainly increasing, but we believe there's significant opportunity. That market is so big, Ugu, that, that we're not concerned that we'll be sort of, you know, uh, assets will eventually become overpriced as a result of the, the increasing numbers of players. But you're the market <coughs> leader, so you you really do have the advantage, often sure. as a market leader does, sure. to lose it or exactly. just to regather yourself. And it appears as though in the past little while you've been doing that. You've been regathering and looking to, to how you're going to go forward. You did mention digital. What about distance education? Is that, a, is that a threat to you or perhaps an opportunity? Distance education is a big opportunity. I mean, up until now, um, I've mainly spoken about schools, right? But we've got two other divisions, uh, critical divisions uh, in our uh, stable. The one is tertiary, where I see significant growth opportunities. And distance is the main driver of that. I mean, when you study the, the world over now, the sort of leading universities, in fact, the Ivy Leagues, as we, we spoke the other day, the Ivy League universities, all of them have established distance platforms. The MOOC movement, uh, the mass open online courses is the order of the day. 
Um, so we at this stage have, we've invested over the last while in the platforms, right? But we don't have a solid distance offering yet. But that is definitely part of the strategic path for our tertiary division going forward. We could have, think about it, we could have thousands of students uh, from Kenya, Nigeria, English-speaking Africa throughout the continent um, be ad advitech students through Varsity College, through our existing institutions in South Africa if we get the distance platform right. Africa's uh, University of Phoenix. Exactly, exactly. I mean, to, uh, you know, I, would, uh, I must actually remember that the Africa's University of Phoenix is a good, because University of Phoenix have actually transformed, if, if you think about it, in the U.S., very few people know about the University of Phoenix, but it is, you know, uh, the most, in fact, Google uh, published a study which suggested the most searches actually uh, is, for, is for University of Phoenix. And that's because they've managed to establish themselves as a market leader in that uh, space in, 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 in the U.S. Hundreds of thousands of students. That's exactly right. In fact, Coursera, the, the open, um, mass open online sort of most well-known firm, I don't know if you know, but the former president of Yale mm -hmm. is now one of the leading lights at Coursera. And uh, they now have 7 million online registered uh, users now. You know, these are not all students, uh, etc. But to, to capture 7 million people onto your sites, onto your courses, at some stage they will have to monetize that. So there are still experiments going on how best that uh, platform will work. But undoubtedly, we will have to enter that space and grow it onto the, onto the a continent. A big mindset shift. If you wanted a campus to get seven, th seven million students, imagine you'd need something the size of Johannesburg. That was Advertech Chief Executive Leslie Mastor.